So as a continuation of our exploration of the perfs on our regular testing interface, we're going to look at a different metric. We're going to look at the ping metric. And this is an evaluation of round trip latency, the latency, the time it takes to, for, for data to travel between our source and some remote destination. And we use the same interface that we, we did in the previous example to set this up. So if we're looking at our person or interface, this time we're using the, the LBL instance at nettest.lbl.gov, we would still get into this interface via the same mechanism. We'd go to the configured test screen. And if you haven't already authenticated, it'll ask you to authenticate because this is a functionality that's only available to administrators of this machine. You'll notice that we have uh, several tests scheduled already. We can configure any of these tests to do something different. We could delete the tests outright or we can disable them. In this case, we're going to add a new ping test. It's available on the bottom of the screen right here. When we click on the add a new test, the first thing that we need to do is we need to add in the configuration for this particular test. So we always start with a name. So I'm just going to call this the video ping test. A lot of these options are going to be fine as, as they are, but I'll explain each of them. The first option sets the interface that the measurement is going to use as its egress. On this host, there are, only, there are two interfaces. Only one of them is configured to be connected to the network. So in this case, ETH0 would be the default interface. So I'll just leave that as the default. The next piece of information for this test is the time between ping tests. So this is configured to be five minutes. So what this means is that every five minutes, we're going to kick off an independent ping test, and then these results will be stored on the backend database for later use. Ping is a very lightweight measurement. It doesn't take up a lot of network bandwidth or a lot of CPU power. So we can make a lot of these tests and not see any impact upon our host or upon the network itself. So we're going to leave the default of five minutes. Every single ping test is going to consist of 10 independent ping packets that are sent. And the time between the packets is going to be approximately one second. So it takes 10 seconds to do this full test, and then the results are, are saved in the database on the back end. We're going to be using ping packets that are a size of 1,000 bytes. This is smaller than what the maximum transmission unit should be for any given network segment. So once we set up this test, it's going to appear here in our scheduled testing interface. But we don't have any hosts that are configured to use it at this point. So there's two ways that we can add in hosts. The first thing we can do is we can add a new host via this button right here. In this case, I'm going to use the address of a host of one of our collaborators, personer.nsrc.org. We don't need to add a description, but we can if we want to. When we click Add, that host is going to show up here in this Test Members field. It also is able to tell us that uh, this address resolves to both an IPv4 and an IPv6 address, and it'll perform the appropriate test using one of those. The other method that we can use to add in host is by looking up the addresses in our global lookup service based on the communities that this host participates in. So we're participating in two communities. One of them is ESNet, one of them is DOE SC Lab. If we were to click on one of those things, it's going to do a query to the lookup service to find other hosts. In this case, it couldn't find any hosts that are participating in these communities. Once we've configured all of the different hosts that are going to be available in this test, we always go down to the bottom and we click Save. And what this is going to do is it's going to save the configuration files on the back end, and it's going to restart the essential services. So once this is completed with its saving operation, it's going to start performing the measurements. The measurements aren't going to show up right away. They'll show up over the course of the day after it's made several different tests. So once these uh, results start to show up in the database, you're able to go through and evaluate them using the, the onboard graphing software, which is also available here on the left-hand side. If you uh, visit the throughput and latency graphs later on after you've configured these tests, the data for this should start to show up.